given to us. You will hold town halls in large enough facilities that we can get there in the large enough long enough lead time so we can actually plan to get there. Then you will have some office presence that we can get to without driving two hours. Jane, I have to tell you, when you said at the beginning of this that none of the congressmen have <coughs> had an office in Berks County. Costello. 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 Other than Costello. I was actually shocked. I, I did not know that. And I think that's appalling. Yeah, um, appalling. Because the, at least speaking for the 15th, the Berks County population is a significant part of the 15th. And I'm not saying that it has to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be a big special office, but it needs to be an office that's actually staffed with people, with regular hours where people know what the hours are that they can visit and can reach their Congress person. Um, and I, as far as town halls go, um, I have told other audiences this. I will have very regular town halls, and they will not be telephone. <laughs> and I think the town halls, if we are stuck with a gerrymandered district such, such as we are now, those town halls have to take place in different parts of the district on a rotating basis. Mm -hmm. And yes, certainly with enough time, lead time, so that citizens know that there's going to be a town hall and, and where it's going to be. Susan, I just want to say one of the stories I do like to tell people, you're absolutely correct that it's appalling that they don't have offices in our county. It takes me an hour and 20 minutes to get to Meehan's office. Mm -hmm. And I'm pissed off the whole time on <laughs> the <laughs> Because it shouldn't take me that long. Right. And then I meet with them, and then I'm really pissed off when I come home. So I'm really not And you're one person. Driving. Why should you have to drive that far to meet with one person when he could be coming to Berks County and meeting with a whole group of people at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to piggyback and say though the other the other part of this is that the bar is set very low for most politicians. And as you call folks, they are just delighted that their congressperson showed up for the ice cream social and the ribbon cutting ceremony. And if you ask them how they voted, I don't know, but he's kind of a nice guy. So nice becomes the political currency that gets people elected as opposed to their voting record. Charlie Dent's a nice guy but he voted for this latest tax bill. So, so let's be very clear at what's at stake, right? And that tax bill is horrific because it is, it, it's going to make legal poverty. And it's, it's going to increase economic stratification between the 1% and the 99%. So, so um, the other part is that we should expect our politicians to be human beings, right? So, so Politicians um, get elected off of votes, but I'm more than my vote. And I think that most, most of the politicians I've met, unfortunately, are very transactional people. You give me a dollar, you give me a vote, I'll show up for you. That's not good enough, right? You've got to represent all of the people, even the folk that didn't vote for you, even the folk that don't like you, even the folk that have the money to give to you. And so what we've got to put back in government is humanity. Because our current bills and legislation and public policy and this current administration is void of emotional intelligence. I'm, I'm being very serious. Because somehow when we talk about what's appropriate as a human being, that's a soft skill. No. Some of these folks have very upsetting childhoods. Had to have to see the legislation coming out of Washington, D.C. I mean, I'm, I'm being very serious. There's something distinctly wrong when we don't place our children's education as a priority. I mean, this, we are actually going to probably elect Roy Moore. <laughs> we are probably going to elect him, simply because he's got high name recognition. That's the nation we have become, right? So, so now is the time for us to reclaim our power and put folk who are closest to the pain of everyday folk in office. And unfortunately, we who are progressives, we don't like talking about money because money becomes like a, a bad thing. We don't get elected without money. That's just kind of the way it works. So, so we've got to, as progressives, put our money together. We have to use political office as a way to organize. I love Barack Obama on some of the things that he did. Unfortunately, he did not keep his community organization together once he got elected. And therefore, the ACA was a heavy lift for him. 
Political office is a way to organize constituents to pass legislation that's good for everybody. I just want to say one more thing, if I can. Sorry, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to, uh, not we, I don't think the people of Alabama are going to elect Roy Moore just because of high name recognition, although that certainly helps. The people of Alabama are going to elect Roy Moore in all likelihood. We can all pray otherwise, but um, because the Republican Party is doing what it does best. And you all know that the president gave him a somewhat anemic endorsement yesterday, which seemed to be just enough for the Republicans to rush back in <coughs> with their money and their support. Why? I mean, the idea that any person, any one Republican, let alone a whole lot of Republicans, could back Roy Moore, it, and I don't need to say why everybody in the room knows about Roy Moore, it's, it's just really mind-boggling to me. And so as much as I, now maybe you could say I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth because on the other hand, I do think we as Democrats must band together and must elect good people. And I guess that's exactly what I'm accusing the Republicans of banding together as Republicans. But, you know, it, it, for different causes, I believe. Yeah. 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 I agree, and I think Democrats as a whole, if, if we were running a Roy Moore, we would not be lining up to support him, and you've heard the residents of Alabama on television saying, well, I can't elect a, I can't elect a Democrat, and I can't help but believe that most Democrats <coughs> would not be lining up behind a Roy Moore type of candidate if he mm. happened to be a Democrat. So, um, <coughs> I think this kind of group is exactly what's needed. We need a lot of grassroots groups. The only other thing I want to say on this topic, and then I'll turn it back over to Jane, is um, next year, we are going to see in every district in Pennsylvania a very fierce Republican opposition. You can count on it. Whoever wins the Democratic primary in every single district is going to be in for the race of their lives. Um, and it's going to get ugly. It's going to be tremendously expensive because we already have heard estimates of what kind of, I don't know about the other districts, I can tell you the estimates I've heard in the 15th on the Republican side are $10 million to, to hold that seat. Um, it, those are the kinds of dollars that we will not raise as Democrats, no matter how hard we try and how many, how many people we call. But what Democrats can do is they can really band together because ultimately it's what Elizabeth said. It's the votes. It's the votes that we turn out on election day. And that's got to happen next year. We've got to see a review of this past November 7th. One of the things though that I think we've got to remember, we had a very expensive election in Georgia. I think the estimates were they spent $55 million on that election yeah. and we still lost. Yeah. So we've got to not only raise the money but I think we need to step back and look, who are we running? Yeah. And does that person represent the district? And that's where I feel really good about running in this district is because I'm in the trenches with you. And I'm working with you. And I think that is, that's the challenge, is that we have to have someone who connects with the people because that does translate into votes. You can spend all the money you want, but if you're not willing to spend time with the people, there's a saying, people may forget what you say, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. I think when you have someone connected to the people and someone who people feel like, yeah, she or he will go fight for me, that's, that's really important as well.